Retired in March with over seven figures. Dead in June with over seven figures. Man, I've had this conversation so many times with people, with uh, widows many times, with friends who've seen loved ones or friends of theirs go well before their time. And just uh, the best, the best thing for my career, what made me recognize how I love what I do. I'll never, and this is a friend of mine, a friend of the families. This is the best, this is the moment where it sank in that I'm doing good work. And I'll never, I'll never, ever forget this about the work that I'm doing. Um, and not many others, frankly. Nina, when we lived in in, uh, in Shenandoah Valley, we lived in uh, in Dayton, and Nina was a friend of the family's. We had bought a vehicle off of her. Before, that's how I met her, frankly. Uh, we bought a vehicle off of her because ours died, and uh, I can't remember the story. But anyway, we bought one. It was a it was a Jeep Cherokee, one of those old old school Jeep Cherokees. And, uh, and we became friends with the family. Um, you know, I knew her sons. Um, I was just good people, Nina was. Uh, anyway, uh, she was actually turned out to be a client of mine later on. And she was a nurse, or is. She's not anymore. She's retired now for many years. And uh, she had married a second, her second husband. And um, her second husband was quite a bit older than her and not the greatest of health. But, you know, he wasn't, you know, keeling, keeling over because of a pandemic or anything like that. This is back in, I want to say, 2007, 8, no, man, maybe 2005, something like that. Anyway, long story short, Nina was a nurse and, you know, it was, it was, it was getting tough, you know, tough on an old body and being a nurse. Always standing up, you know, your knees are, your, you know, it's like a dental hygienist or a dental assistant. We're just always going like this tough on an old person's body and she wasn't old and she's like 58 but i'm just you know if you've been doing that for 30 years it's tough man that's why we need to increase the retirement age screw you who say that the only people who say we need to increase the retirement age is people who sit in front of a computer all day who aren't freaking out there doing laborious activities you freaking fools we need to increase the retirement age i hate that i hate that it's so elitist and my side shouldn't be involved in that, the right wing side. No, but I'm not a right wing. I'm an Austrian economist, and I'm a libertarian. Yeah, you got your head so far up your butt, you can't freaking tell which is north. Anyway, so the point being is, uh, Nina said, you know, Josh, I just, I'm, I'm getting burnt out. And, you know, my husband is, we'll call him Jack. My husband is just, uh, you know, I just, he, he wants to take a trip he wants to do one of those viking cruises you know going through germany and wherever those places i've never done we'll never do one but he wants to do that and you know, go see where his you know his homeland's from his you know his german and austria you know he said he wants to do that she goes i just i'm worried though if i retire i can't do it unless i retire because we want to take like a month or two months off or something like that in the summertime to do it and i just i and you know, she said i can't do it unless i fully retire and i'm just like i just don't know if i can have the capacity to retire i said nina you <laughs> You will never regret doing this with, with Jack, ever. Don't, you'll never regret doing this. You'll never regret it. She had no dad. She lived pretty frugally. She had a beautiful, beautiful dog. I forgot his name. I want to call him Charlie, but it wasn't Charlie. I love that guy. Uh, not a German Shepherd, a Golden Retriever. <laughs> so this is why I used to make house calls. I'd go to their house. And that guy would jump all over the place. Oh, man. <laughs> that was one of the best things about being a, a like a making house calls you get to see people in their element and that's uh that was pretty fun very time consuming but very fun and enjoyable and once you break bread it's, it's a truly different engagement than uh um, just doing everything over the phone but be that as it may and so so she quit and she was nervous she quit and i said look man we'll make it work don't worry you know, I'm not, the reason we can make it work, don't worry, is because she has no debt. She had no debt. She just didn't spend that much. Ah. So they took the tour. You know, they did the thing to uh, Germany, the Viking cruise thing. And in a couple, you know, weeks, months later or something like that, she, you know, she calls me, email, I can't remember. We, we had talked, she goes, man, you know, Jack was like a kid in the candy store. You know, doing all this stuff in Germany and Austria and Switzerland and, you know, north, wherever, north Italy, I don't know. It was, it, we just had a blast. A couple months later, Jack died. I think it was Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, he died. Heart attack. And he wasn't in a great shape. Heart attack, though. If memory serves, heart attack. It was a sudden death, but it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like he was a freaking marathon runner and all of a sudden he just, you know, died suddenly. If you know what I'm saying, 
I mean, he wasn't in great shape, but he wasn't like a million pounds smoked a car of cigarettes or anything like that. But he, you know, but he, he could have stood to lose some weight and, you know, he had some issues going on. He, he was ex-military. Um, anyway, but he died selling, if memory serves on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, I can't remember. But it's one of those, you know, holiday festive and he died. She found him just dead, died suddenly. This is many years ago. So it was before, you know, I'm talking about came along. Anyway, so she, but we talked and she just said, that's, I'm so glad I had the chance to spend that time with him. I'm so glad I had the chance. If she did not retire, she would not have had that opportunity. Dudes, survivorship bias. Let me just explain what that is. Everyone and their mom says, I know someone who's in a nursing home. I know someone who's living to 100. Everybody will say that. They're, they're using survivorship bias. Yes, you know someone who's in a nursing home. You know someone who's uh, living to 100. But how many people do you have died before they got that age? Do you see what I'm saying? Just because, you know, Anna Lou, Anna Lee, whatever her name is, is 100 years old in a nursing home spending 5000 bucks a month, you don't know freaking Joe Schmo, Joe Sniffy, you know, freaking Jody. <laughs> Jody from the, if you're in the military, you know what I'm talking about. Jody, you don't know all those other people who didn't make it that long. They all died before they could be surviving in the nursing home. So you're focusing on that person as if that's likely just because that survivorship bias full frontal, man. Survivorship bias is focusing on only what you can see, not what happened before that. How many people... For Anna Lee to be 100 years old in a nursing home spending 6000 bucks a month, how many non-Anna Lees died before that? 99? 990? It's insanity. If you got seven figures and you got no debt and you're worried about health care costs, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? You're going to leave your wife a freaking widow too soon because you're spending all this time and energy worried, worried, worried about your financial re your ability to make things work. And you're still grinding away, grinding away. What is wrong with you, man? You're going to run out of time before you run out of money for the vast, vast majority of us. And the worst case, worst case that happens is we rely solely on Social Security which is the point of Social Security, is to keep you out of poverty. Social Security will not make you rich, but it'll keep you out of poverty, dudes. If you're relying on Social Security and you've got a house and you have to sell the house to go to a freaking assisted living facility, Medicaid will help you at some point. Yeah, no one wants to live like that. And the vast majority of us, the vast, vast majority won't, but that is a safety net. Huh, safety net to keep you out of abject poverty. <sighs> So when Nina told me that, again, this might be 15 years ago. I can't remember. A long time ago. I said, man, it all of a sudden it clicked for me. I said, everything I'm doing up to this point has led me to that you know, perspective to be able to, to just, oh, just to be so proud of myself for having the ability to see outside the, through the fog of this idiots in financial planning and to see there's real life people here that need help in real life financial planning. Because most financial planners don't know the head from the hole in the ground. And that, that doesn't mean they're dumb. It doesn't mean they're not well-educated. doesn't mean they're not even students of the business. But they focus on the survivor bias. Survivorship bias. John Bogle talks a lot about that. Well, he doesn't anymore. But survivorship bias. Survivorship bias. Get to know what survivorship bias. And I always say, am I falling for the fallacy of survivorship bias? That I see what I see inherently means it's something likely to happen to me. That is survivorship bias. You've got to get over that. Because so many people die. A hell of a lot more people die. I mean, literally, for a factor of 10, probably, I don't know, pulling that out of my butt, I don't know. Before they're freaking abject poverty, eating cat food, and living on freaking Medicaid. Ah, man, all right, love your thoughts. We'll see you.